Welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast Secret Dump. I'm your host, Natasha Legera. I'm his co-hostess. I'm a her. It doesn't even matter anymore. Moshe Kasher is my name, and we are still in the woods. We're in the woods. We're with another family. Moshe is constantly getting in fights with the nine-year-old. No, I wouldn't. That doesn't... They're obsessed with you. Every time I come in, there's like a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old and a four-year-old flanked to you, just arguing with you, asking you questions, <laughs> um, trying to scare you. What can I say? I have a lot of charisma, and most of it is focused on people who have not yet graduated from fourth grade. <laughs> What were you arguing with the one girl today about in the car? You guys just kept going. Oh, because she was like, my dad's never ridden a dirt bike. And no, Moshe's she like, said my, yes, he has. She, I've seen him. She said, I've never, my dad's never ridden a motorcycle. And I was like, well, I've known your dad for 20 years. And I knew that he used to have a motorcycle. She's like, no, he didn't. And I, and I asked her, I go, what are, what are you getting out of denying this? What do you, what do you, what's... Oh, I know what she was saying too. I, I that that was one fight, but then the other the fight that was connected with that and how it started was she wanted a piece of Nicorette. <laughs> and you were like she, no, was she like, wanted a piece of gum and all I had was Nicorette. But she saw that you were eating gum and she's like, I want some gum. And instead of just telling her, No, it's not for you, you're like, It's Nicorette. It means that I was addicted to smoking cigarettes and it's a way to get off drugs. Do you still want a piece? Well, I was <laughs> The, the way, the I energy that you gave that argument was mind-boggling. I considered it a teachable moment. <laughs> okay. Uh, what does she get out of it if I say, no, this is my gum? Then she'll just be like, this guy's an asshole. But if I go, you know what What this is, is I've had a, I had a struggle. I got hooked on nicotine. And now I'm chomping Nicorette. Then she'll go, wow, I don't want that gum because it's not for me. And she was like, are you addicted to cigarettes? Were you addicted to cigarettes? And you were like, can you deduce the fact that I'm on Nicorette to then come up with your... Yeah, I am a great teacher. And I appreciate you bringing that up. I find opportunities to make every moment a teachable moment, not only with the eight-year-old, but with you. There's like a fine line between teachable moment and man's <laughs> You know what's awesome about being around... I don't think you get to say teachable moment you know every what, time you want to explain to a young woman what, you know what, what's how awesome? to do things. You know what's awesome about being around eight-year-olds? What? Mansplaining is just a part of uh, of the, the pr educational process. Like when it's an adult woman and you mansplain something, they're like, hey, fuck off. I don't need you to tell me that. But when it's an eight-year-old, they're kind of like, well, this guy's an adult. He probably knows what's up. So it's a really a great opportunity to mansplain without consequence. Well, they do seem to like you, but like... How could they not? I'm a likable guy. I'm filled with charisma. Sometimes the kids will tell us to do things, our kids included, and my my MO is to just always pretend like I didn't hear them and not do things for them. Right, and my MO... And you is, get into a fight with them. My MO is to explain that I don't work for them. <laughs> That's kind of my thing. <laughs> Natasha will just look aloof and, look, and walk away, and I'll just be like, oh, I don't work for you. Or I'll say something like... Um, I'll, I'll never do anything for you that you are capable of doing. You for say that all the time. <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to drill this lesson. But these aren't your kids. I know. They'll be like, "Can you help me put on my seatbelt?" And then Moshe will be like, "Can you let me do just, it yourself?" Let me just say, I'm. I, I have to tell you guys, and you, Natasha, we're recording this episode in my RV that is four feet from the RV that they're sleeping in, and I am not comfortable. Okay, I'm feeling, I understand. No, I'm feeling like every podcasting moment we're having right now is being piped directly into their ears <laughs> as they sleep. And they're like, Uncle Moshe, no, a they call, mansplaining wait, bitch. Can I just say what the kid calls Moshe? They call, they call him Moshe Daddy. Moshe Daddy, and I did not. <laughs> and listen, he did not like it. No, let me just say, I did not in, uh, solicit that. I didn't ask for that. It was something that happened organically, and honestly, I really am enjoying it. And well, it, the, the troubling thing is that I'm not Natasha, mommy. Well, how could you be? You don't have a maternal vibe. About I know. You. I just ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> I just think my approach brings way less trouble 
There's no trouble. Well, we love these children, and we're having an excellent time with There's them. Own... I just think that Moshe has never... We were not meant to associate and talk to daily more than one child. <laughs> I swear <laughs> they're hearing this right now. I'm <laughs> so uncomfortable. I um, I agree. I Every time I meet... Every time I meet a new child, I am reminded of the fact that I am, uh, I like my kid. I don't like kids. Like, you, you know that, like, you know, like, if you have a, like a creep in your life who's always like, I'll take the kids. Why don't I take the kids? I'll take the kids on a sleepover. I'll take the kids on a cookout. And you're like, ew, is this guy, is this guy like a fucking weird pervert? I'm like the opposite of that guy. I'm you like, mean like a good dad? No, I'm talking about like, okay, you have kids and then all of a sudden somebody you know is like, you know, why don't you just leave the kids with me and I'll take them on a camping trip? No, that's not a thing. It sure is. Every creepy sexual predator story starts with a guy that inexplicably the parents are like, this guy seems nice. Let's let our kids <laughs> camp with him this weekend. Like, that, that's how every creepy sexual predator story goes. I'm like the opposite of that guy. I'm like... I'll never hang out with your kids. I'd be comfortable if I never even talked to them. I like you can basically what I'm saying is you can rest assured with me. I'm a safe guy because I do not want to have anything to do with you or your kids. Well, I like having kids around. They're useful and they also these kids are really impressive. Wait, you know so what the difference fun. is? I realize here's what the difference is between the vibe of these kids around you and around me. Me? Yeah, I want to be Natasha mommy. No, but you are actually. Me? They see me as a because I have like this the personality I have, they see me as a as a target for antagon antagonizing. It's like fun. They have fun right, antagonizing. They're always me. around you, kind yeah. of asking you all they, these they questions. Want, they come to antagonize me. You they see as somebody that they they're kind of in awe of you. And they want you to like teach them piano lessons and they want you to like um they want you to like teach them about acting and like you you're one you're, of them asked me to teach them how to dance. Yep, and I came over, and Natasha was teaching her how to dance to Whoop, There It Is. Oh, no. no. <laughs> Who Let the Dogs Out? Sorry. Who Let well, the Dogs Out? And I was like... You got so mad, but it's like you got to, like, I, I ease was, in somehow. I was like, uh-uh. We, if this is a dance lesson, we are not doing the greatest hits of 1992. Put some real music on. And then I put some disco on, and all the kids walked away. <laughs> yeah, you got to kind of, like, get in with the Trolls 2 soundtrack and no, then, you like, don't. sprout you don't. out. You don't have to get in with the Troll two, Trolls 2 hey, soundtrack. Hey, I tried to get our kid into jazz, and she doesn't like it. <laughs> Listen, the choice is not between John Coltrane and Who Let the Dogs Out. <laughs> There's a gigantic area in the middle of music that you can introduce kids to. So that's all I'm saying. Okay, well, the point is we're having a wonderful time and we're spending a lot of time with kids and, you know, it's really special. It is. And Moshe Daddy is here for some secrets. Let's play one. Hi, Natasha and Moshe. I love you guys so much. The podcast is amazing. But I just want to let you know my secret. Um, it's actually about when I lost my virginity, which I feel like is always awkward for everyone, right? But mine, he didn't fully get in, so there was no insertion. He got in between my thighs and came instantly, which I feel like is normal for like a 15, 16 year old. But after that, I didn't even get a chance to tell him that we hadn't actually had sex before he gave me this letter letting me know that he only had one testicle and thanked me so much for not making it a thing for him. Um, but in reality, I just had no idea and I never told him that it was not successful because I didn't want to crush him. Okay, that's it. Bye. I think that if you have a flaw, not that one testicle is a flaw, but he sees it as a flaw, don't put it in writing and give it to a new lover. Well, I have to say, she was like, it's normal to premature ejaculate when you're 15. You know what isn't normal is penning a letter about your single testicle. That to me is, a, that feels like a 30-year-old virgin, not a 15-year-old. Dearest Yvette, thank you for not mocking my single marble 
I truly appreciate you being so sensitive towards me. It's a good thing she didn't crush him too, because he can't he can't be crushed. I'm trying to think if I ever had anyone jerk off in my thighs. J well, like just like go up and down accidentally. You mean? Yeah. We could try it. Wait, that's not exactly losing your virginity. Then. It sure isn't. It sure is not. That was I, another thing I noticed. That woman may be a virgin to this day. And that poor single bald bastard also may be busting half a nut on someone's thighs right now thinking that's what sex is. Poor guy. That's sad. That is sad. Maybe this next one will be happier. Okay. Uh, hi. Um, I guess this is a secret of mine. Um, so back in high school, I had this huge crush on this guy. And I had no in to get to know him until I learned that we had a mutual best friend, or at least um, his best friend. Uh, I barely knew her, um, but I saw her essentially as an in. I feel terrible. Um, so I started talking to her, and sure enough, I got to know him. Um, and that's how I learned that he smelled like old yogurt all the time. And it was really weird and really gross, and I never really approached him, never tried to get into a relationship with him. Meanwhile, the girl that I barely knew, um, we are best friends to this day, and she is like a sister to me. And I guess that's my deep, dark secret, is that the only reason uh, I approached her to begin with is because I was trying to get with her best friend. And... I will never tell her that, and I feel super guilty about it. But, yeah, uh, that's my deep, dark secret. Yep. Here's a question, Mosh. If you smell, like, something very specific and bad, do you think that you would like to know? Is it something you could control? Do you think there's some people who just smell like spoiled dairy? Like, what? Well, it. the question is, why does he smell like old yogurt, right? Like, it's probably like his clothing. Maybe his mom didn't wash them right. If that's why, then yes, I think he would like to know. But what if you have, you know, there's a condition where you smell like old fish and there's nothing you can do about it. And it's a disability and you're, you're, you just smell like old fish. And if that's the case, he probably wouldn't want to know. So the, I, I think the question is, can if does the smell happen from a place that he can control? Because if you can control it, Absolutely. I once wanted to start a website called you ought to know dot com. And uh, it's based on loosely based on um, Alanis Morissette. Uh, but it was basically a website where multiple friends could join up to tell people messages that they needed to let their friend know about, but that they were all too scared to tell them. So like a bad breath friend. We all, we've all had a bad breath friend, right? It's truly terrible. Like everybody just hangs out with a bad breath friend and just like don't lean in too close. So this would be, you got an email from you ought to know com, and it would say four of your friends uh, want you to know that you have chronic halitosis. Oh, and this then is horrifying. But, yeah, but it would be anonymous. So you'd be embarrassed, but you'd take action and do something about it. I mean, wouldn't you want to know if you had really bad breath? I guess, Marsha. I would want to know so I could do something about it. Anyway, about this story, I don't think you need to feel guilty. It's like you thought she was the in. It turned out old yogurt was the in to a friendship that would last a lifetime. Hey, Moshe. Um, hey, Natasha. Um, I'm just driving around a big Sprinter van right now grooming dogs. But when I was 16 years old, I used to work at Pizza Hut. And they have a big jar of oil. And, um, well... You know, you would take that oil and you put it at the bottom of the pan and make sure that it's nice and crispy. And the last day I was working there, I really didn't like my manager. So I got there to pee in that oil. Um, so I did. And um, so a lot of people probably had my heat. Um, I don't know. The oven's like 500 degrees. So maybe it baked it all off. This was like 15 years ago. I also peed in my manager's desk. There was a young punk kid that worked there and he'd hide anchovies behind pictures on the wall and I'd tape them on top of people's lockers so you wouldn't see them and, and he kind of dared me to do some stuff and I kind of felt bad about it because there's this big guy that worked there and he found out about it and cornered me and said my son eats this pizza and how could you and I told him it was a joke and I didn't do it but yeah I, I drank a bunch of Mountain Dew and I've eaten a lot of stuff I peed that when I was 16. All right guys take care. Listen it's like why didn't you stop 
at pissing in the manager's desk. That seems like a great form of revenge. To the manager. Anchovies behind the painting seems like a great form of revenge. To the manager. Why pee? Why put these innocent customers who all they want is a deep dish pan, pan pizza and now they got a, I mean, now they got a taste your piss pizza? It's like nobody, why? Well, here's the beauty about being young. Like, I remember it didn't dawn on me like other people's feelings mm. or eth- ethically what's right. Like that kind of stuff didn't really kick into like my mid 20s, I think. So like that's kind of the beauty of being young is that you can like just piss on someone's that's in, the, piss in a fryer and let people eat it. That's the beauty of being young. <laughs> I thought it was like innocence and happiness and a, a wide eyed wonder towards the world. No, It's that you can piss in a fryer. Well, I remember once I just, like, stole stuff from people that our friends knew. And, like, I was just, like, shoplifting. I just didn't think about what any of the consequences were. I was like, oh, that'd be funny. That'd be nice. I want that. Oh, yeah, I'll do that to this person. Um, I don't know. It sucks, too. It's like, we don't know what pizzeria this dude worked at. We don't know when it was. So the the tragic reality is any one of us might have eaten this pea pizza. It's kind of like when, you know when they do a firing squad? Do you know about this? Mm-mm. When they're executing somebody via fire, firing squad, uh, f- four of the people, or what? I don't know how many people are in a firing squad, but like four of the people have a real bullet and one of them has a blank, and no one ever knows who had the blank, so no one ever knows for sure if they killed someone or not. That's like us with this pizza. None of us, all six, seven billion of us around the world, none of us will ever know if we ate the pee-pee. Here's the thing. There's probably so much fucked up shit in everything we eat. I I get so grossed out if I start thinking about it. Yeah, it's best just to live and let live. And uh, sometimes I don't want you to eat the ice cream with out of the out of the freezer with the spoon. Out of out of the carton. Yeah. <laughs> what does that have to do with peeing? I'm just saying, like, there's germs everywhere. Like, if I just imagine, how does the like, germ? I just imagine people cooking or, like, tasting things wait, and not wait. washing things. But what does that have to do with eating ice cream out of the carton? I'm just saying, like, even my husband, I don't want his germs on my stuff sometimes. Oh, because you don't want my mouth. Yes. That I use to make love to you every night. Yeah, like, when you're cooking. Every night I use my mouth to make love to you, but you don't, every single night, probably sometimes hourly, I use my mouth to make love to you, but you don't want that mouth in the ice cream? I don't know. If you're cooking, are you supposed to, like taste things and put the spoon back i don't know if you're podcasting you're supposed to audibly yawn (laughs) (laughs) well we had to do this once the baby was put to bed which is so late shall we play another secret yeah one more before natasha goes to bed hi natasha and moshe this secret literally just happened and it actually involves the the podcast so i figured i had to call and tell you so Where do I start? I had a bunch of old clothes that I wanted to donate. And the church in my town that I used to go to when I was younger has a donation box. So I drove there. I was listening to the podcast. And as I was pulling into the parking lot, I was listening to the anniversary episode. And it just so happened to be the part where Moshe was saying, no more anal cream pies over and over again. So I was like, ooh. And I turned the volume down uh because you know it was a church parking lot uh dropped my bags in the box and when I happened to catch the side of the box I saw that it says the clothes are sold by the church to thrift stores and that the church keeps the money so I was a little bit mad about that because I thought I was donating clothes um to people who needed them Anyway, so I was so mad that I got back in my car, rolled down the windows, turned my volume all the way up, rewound the podcast about 10 seconds, and blasted no more anal cream pies over and over again in the parking lot until it ended, and then I drove away. Um, Okay, that's all. Bye. That's the kind of revenge that is moral, it is just, the target is clear, and it is a just shot across the bow. You don't pee in someone else's pizza. You scream no more anal cream pies at a church who is taking your money. I support this. Speaking of screaming, I just heard my child start screaming. Okay, I think we gotta go.
Uh, but listen, no more anal cream pies. We'll be here in the forest if you need us. We're up. I'll let you guys know to the listeners. We are up in the forests of Northern California. We're, we're towards the coast. So if you need us, that's where we are. You can find us. We're somewhere in Northern California. So come find us, you know, see what you can see. But uh, for now, we have to go tend to Natasha's child. And um, I'm glad you have one because I think you're a great mother, even though no one would ever and will ever call you Mommy Natasha. <laughs> if it'll make you feel... You out of here? I hear her okay, screaming. Okay, I guess we're out of here. Hey, Tosh? I love you. I love you too.